Hello, I'm Melanie the Midwife and I'm a private midwife, research academic with a PhD and the creator of Transformative Birthwork. And today's report on the research is from a new paper from authors Kirsten Small, Mary Sidebotham, Jennifer Fenwick and Jenny Gamble. And in the birth research world, they are certainly amongst the elite. So you can be sure that we are in for a delicious evidence-based treat today. Now, the first author, Kirsten Small, not only has her PhD on the topic of cardiotocography, and from here on in, we will refer to cardiotocography as a CTG, but she's also an accomplished academic, lecturer, obstetrician, and one of the contributors of my online course, Transformative Birthwork. So this report on the research is on a paper called Intrapartum Cardio, start again, Intrapartum Cardiotograph Monitoring and Perinatal Outcomes for Women at Risk. And it's a literature review. So before we start, let me define and explain a few of the words in this title. The word intrapartum is maternity jargon for meaning the time during labor and birth. A cardiotocograph, what we'll be calling a CTG, and it's routinely shortened to CTG, and midwives will often refer to it as getting a trace. So if you're told to lie back so we can get a trace on the baby, this means you are about to receive a CTG unless you say no. And the word perinatal refers to a period of time during a woman's pregnancy, labor and birth. And there are wildly varying definitions of the perinatal period. And it appears in this paper that they're referring to the time of labor and birth and the week following. So perinatal mortality refers to the number of stillbirths and death, deaths in the first weeks of life. And a literature review is where a team of researchers or a researcher gathers up the, all the current information, all the current research information about a particular topic. So in this research, they're looking at CTGs for women who are considered higher risk. So they've gathered all those papers, chosen the ones that are relevant to their study and they're reviewing them and using them all to make a final statement about what they've found. So this study wanted to find out if attaching a CTG to a woman who's considered at risk of poor outcomes during labor and birth would change the outcomes for their baby. So let's have a look at what the authors did. Firstly, they define the problem and thus justify the purpose of their research. And they know that cesarean section rates have risen in high income countries and that one of the potential drivers for this is the widespread use of CTG monitoring. And from a birth culture perspective, in many high income countries, CTG monitoring is considered to be indicated for women at risk of poor outcomes. But the authors wanted to discover if this clinical approach was actually evidence-based or just done because of the preference of the practitioner. So they did what's called a systematic literature review, which means that they met methodically sifted through the existing research and found all the papers that would help them fulfill the purpose of their research. To discover if the use of CTG during labor and birth for risk for at-risk women would change the outcomes for their babies. So the authors examined randomized control trials and non-experimental research to determine whether a CTG monitoring continuously or intermittent auscultation where you would just intermittently listen to the baby's heartbeat through labor was associated with changes in perinatal mortality or cerebral palsy rates. So they included nine randomized control trials and randomized control trials are considered to be the scientific pinnacle of research if you're looking to discover information about outcomes. So they had nine of them and, in two, and then they had 26 non-experimental studies. And then they set to work to understand how this research was relevant to their purpose. And what we know is that CTG monitoring was introduced in the 1970s and it can display and record a fetal heart rate of the baby and the contraction pattern of the labor. And it's believed that fetal heart rate patterns are considered to provide a physiological information about how well oxygenated the baby is during labor. 
and during labour there is a reduction in blood flow through the placenta and to the baby during contractions. Now, this is actually a normal physiological process and babies are designed to most of the time tolerate this process. However, practitioners fear that this reduction in oxygenation is responsible for some proportion of deaths and some cases of cerebral palsy. So CTG monitoring was introduced as a screening tool in a bid to detect fetal hypoxia or reduced oxygenation in babies so that then they could act and hopefully reduce poor outcomes. Here in Australia, the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have a guideline about intrapartum fetal surveillance and in that they acknowledge that evidence from the randomised control trials do not demonstrate benefit for the use of intrapartum CTG monitoring for infants born to women with risk factors. But they use the non-experimental evidence to support practice and they justify the guidelines that recommend the use of CTG because of this existing non-experimental research. However, the problem with that is that we know that using CTGs is increasing the use of caesarean section and not actually improving outcomes. So the original theory behind the use of CTGs have not yet been proven. And now this research addresses that. In fact, the authors of this paper directly dispute Rand's Cog's stance and approach to how they've developed their guidelines. And they declare in their research that the majority of non-experimental research that they found was at critical risk of bias and should not be relied upon to inform practice. So then the authors, having not been able to rely on the non-experimental data, collected and pulled the data from the randomized control trials. And they found no statistically significant difference in perinatal mortality rates. They also said that CTG monitoring during preterm labor, so any labor before 36 or 37 weeks, was associated with a 291% increase in incidence of cerebral palsy rates. So not only was it not beneficial, it appeared to be harmful. So they explained that research evidence has failed to demonstrate perinatal benefits by the use of intrapartum CTG monitoring for women at risk of poor perinatal outcomes. They suggest there's an urgent need for research into the use of CTGs in labour and whether intrapartum CTG provides any benefits at all. So in conclusion, a lot of the clinical practice guidelines are recommending the use of continuous CTG monitoring for women at risk. However, there's no evidence to support this use based on what we've discovered in this research project. So we can put to bed the experimental research and this research has considered it biased and unreliable. So then also the RANSCOG guidelines that use non-experimental research to back their guidelines up for CTG monitoring may also not be reliable. So now we've got to turn to the randomized control trials, which RANSCOG have already decided were not supportive of the use of CTG for at-risk women and babies, which is the exact finding of this research by Kirsten Small and her team. So no randomized control trial in a population of high or moderately risk women demonstrates a statistically significant difference in stillbirth, neonatal mortality or perinatal mortality rates when comparing CTG to intermittently listening to the baby during labor. So in summary, since its introduction, assumptions have been made that the intrapartum CTG monitoring would provide maternity professionals with an essential diagnostic technique in obstetrical practice, which improves fetal outcomes such as perinatal mortality, morbidity, and neonatal status. But this assumption cannot be supported by research undertaken to date as of 2019. What we now know is intrapartum fetal surveillance guidelines which recommend CTG monitoring for women considered to be at risk are not consistent with the evidence base. Clinicians and professional bodies have an obligation to provide maternity consumers with recommendations that are underpinned by sound evidence. So it's important that pregnant women 
now receive accurate information regarding the lack of evidence of benefit for intrapartum CT gene monitoring when risk factors for poor perinatal outcome are present. Women experiencing preterm labour should also be advised that the use of CT gene monitoring might increase the risk of cerebral palsy with no other apparent benefits. That's it from me today. And for, for more videos like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Melanie the Midwife, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Melanie the Midwife. And you could also get more information at transformativebirthwork.com. I'm Melanie the Midwife, and if you found this helpful, pass it on. <laughs>